Can you please uh, present yourself a little bit? Uh, my name is Ilaria. I'm 25. Um, I was born in Germany uh, in 1978. And uh, I lived uh, in Paris and the rest of my life in Tunisia, except for the, start, the years in which I studied, which were uh, the university. I mean, I studies which were spread between Australia and the US. My name is Christina, I'm 25 years old and um, I'm currently doing my internship period in uh, an association, a cultural association, which goes by the name of Studio Sound Lab. This is actually a recording studio primarily, but also deals with uh, the different aspects of making music and handling uh, management and other artistic sides of the the whole music making thing and um, this internship is actually coming to an end and um, the, the chief of the studio actually asked me to uh, extend the cooperation further beyond the, the deadline of the internship so I'm hopefully going to stay here for a while I think um, as for the introduction, I am uh, Italian and I was born uh, in um, Sardinia, which is an island in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, there I attended my first proper course in sound engineering, which lasted uh, two years. Later on, I came here to Bologna to actually start with my higher education. I started attending university and um, in the meantime I also took up proper vocal training to become a singer and um, that's how I run into the guys who run the studio. Uh, so we started this cooperation first uh, as internship because SandLab actually also employs uh, students from the University of Bologna because of a convention they have and so and could you please uh, tell us briefly your experience in culture culture and uh, um, I haven't uh, worked very much in culture except for my studies when I did my master's and my PhD I did a master's in psychology and a PhD in psychology um, so that meant uh, I worked uh, sometimes alongside um, psychiatrists and psychologists with uh, young children who were affected, supposedly affected by mental disorder. Um, and then I thought, um, I thought sometimes uh, to university. Uh, to young people, but not only that, because the age range was maybe 20, 50. Yes. And then um, I also uh, happened to teach in What was the added value that uh, your experience gave to the community? Um, okay, so. Uh, I hope that um, I have managed somehow to challenge the limits um, in psychological theories and uh, cures. Uh, one, of, uh, one of the aims of my PhD was to challenge uh, the use of uh, antipsychotic uh, medication and schizophrenia uh, and similar symptoms. bring the attention to a more holistic kind of vision that uh, takes care of the human being as a whole, so from a more spiritual point of view. So, in fact, my PhD was in fact psychology and um, 
I've always been interested in culture. My main interest revolves around music because that's the main part of what I do. Um, as I said before, I did a sound engineering in school and um, beside this I was also involved for a number of years in uh, different musical projects. And now let's talk about your beers. Why? Uh, let's talk about your beer. What, what was it about exactly? Okay, my PhD was in psychology and um, focused mainly on um, phenomena such as uh, telepathy between twins, um, imaginary friends, and, uh, and other such phenomena, and the way that they have been seen to link to um, mental disorders such as schizophrenia. So my PhD was an analysis on this phenomena and, uh, and the link to schizophrenia and how in other ways they put um, the link that has been seen uh, with schizophrenia to be and, uh, but what, also, can you tell us uh, what was the, the percentage of under 35 and over 35 uh, years old in, in your course? Okay. Um, I think uh, it was, um, I studied on my own because I did research. But uh, if I'm talking about the PhD, I would say it was maybe 65, 70% under 35 and uh, 30-35% So it was more younger people. More younger people? Yes. But research? Can you please tell us, do you consider if it was easy or difficult for young people to get a more and more important position in task and a higher salary with research in your course? I don't think it was, uh, I don't think it was more difficult for young people. I think it was probably easier. They were there were things that would make things easier for young people. I think we were to do to do a PhD to have to access did you see any gender uh, imbalance regarding salary and responsibilities issues in that job environment? Yes, I see those everywhere. I think, um, I think in, in this society, if you are a woman, you are still taken less seriously. Um, when you study psychology, and especially when you study parapsychology, you could, um, if you're a woman, it's easier to be judged um, as a way you behave. And, um, yes, I think in general you are taken less seriously, and when you want to do research, when you go to women as well, you have to be careful. Um, you mustn't put many feminists, even if you're one, uh, because uh, gender studies uh, and feminism are not taken to seriously. And also, yes, I think that men still have uh, places of power in all fields. Thank you. According to all this experience you have, what can you say you learn? What uh, you can say it has very added in your life? You're asking me what this is, this experience added yes, to my life yes. overall. Well, it um, it added really a lot of of things to my life because um, you see, before entering uh, this association, uh, I sort of had uh, some kind of experience in terms of managing music stuff, but uh, this literally allowed me to step further into this world and to have a deeper and more regular contact with the different uh, people, the different characters who are involved in the music business. Um, I'd say added a much deeper and wider perspective on uh, what making music in every possible sense looks like from the technical aspect because uh, I, I had the chance to put into practice what I learned in uh, the sand engineering school 
to management aspects. I have a broader outlook. I have a, a, a deeper knowledge about what goes on in this world. So it added a lot to to my career, but also to myself as a person. I feel I am. I I grew up. Hi. Okay. Now, according to your experience, even in culture. And uh, co compared with the uh, other other staffs, do you see like you are, you are doing, you are adding any value to the community? I think uh, everyone who takes part in any cultural activity adds value to the community. If we are talking about human value, which is something we tend to overlook in the present times, because uh, sadly it's something that took a step back, a backseat from different aspects like financial aspects but uh, I, I do think it adds a lot to the community because uh, working in a place like this you are sort of a link for different experience that converge so your your role is also to mediate to allow the needs of different people to meet, musicians, sound engineers, bands, uh, managers, so without this kind of activity I think the, the community in terms of artistic worth would be very poor. I think it's much needed that we still have places like this where different experience can come in touch. Okay. So yes. Okay, now coming to funding and uh, Authority. Do you have any links with the local residents or how do you access your funding? Uh, we do have links but uh, we don't have that much of a, an opportunity to assess proper so funding. You, uh, what about uh, young people in your community? How do they perceive the role of culture in society? Unfortunately I don't know many young people. Uh, I think um, and I've been I haven't I haven't been in Italy very long um, I returned in the seminars. It's hard to answer this question, but I think uh, my general perception is that uh, people are losing young people are losing interest in maybe interest in, in culture and maybe the fact that, um, well, I can only speak from my little experience in the school months, so it would be mistaken, um, because I've done private lessons. We do have links, but uh, there are not many initiatives uh, of this kind who get promoted, so I'd say in Italy, generally, it's not that you have uh, as as a cultural association uh, that much of a chance to assess funding when it comes to any artistic activity. So yes, we do have links, but we do not have actual funding. All the financial resources that we have uh, are those we, we can actually earn. We don't have proper support from outside. According to your experience, do you see like uh, you young people are more involved in the field of cultures in your community? Yes, pretty much, because uh, young people are the ones who can keep themselves up to date with what goes on in the culture world, in the culture field. So uh, they are absolutely essential. They are up to date with the new technologies, with, uh, with the things that happen, with new trends, with uh, pretty much everything. So uh, culture would be a completely different world without the aid of young people so they are important and they deserve to be entrusted many aspects of the cultural activity okay what about the government uh, in, in local and national level do you think they support youngsters to access jobs in the field of culture absolutely not it hardly supports youngsters when it comes to find average jobs mm -hmm. so not at all when it comes to culture we are kind of left out, I guess. This is not a country for young people to, to thrive and to get proper support to offer something to the world. Actually, it's quite the opposite. Many youngsters do actually um, go abroad at some point, so 
the answer on this subject is kind of negative on my behalf, so according to what I see, at least. Do you think there is any opportunity for youngsters to get experience in the field of culture? Uh, talking about Italy, where we live, there is an opportunity to do so, but it requires more time and more effort, maybe twice the amount that you will need in other countries where the cultural side of life is uh, less overlooked and uh, more considered. So um, you can actually make it, you can uh, start uh, with your own path and then uh, put all your efforts into it, but you're pretty much on your own. You don't have outside sources that uh, push you further. You have to do it on, on your own. So if you have, if you have the time, the, the passion, the willingness, and maybe also the money to fund your education in the cultural field, then you can do it. But you have to be very, very willing to, to put yourself into this to put all that you have to 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 own this so it's difficult what are the obstacles for supporting culture as a job in Italy? well the, the almost complete indifference when it comes to institution and uh, authorities this is a very 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 big obstacle and a stumbling point for many um, then also the fact that everything has a price. If you have to, if you need to get an education because you have to become a sound engineer, you of course have to pay enrollment fees and the likes. So um, you can't hope in um, scholarships, you know, like the kind they offer in universities. If you if you're not wealthy, you will have a hard time in pursuing a career in culture. Um, also, working in culture is not regarded as a proper job in Italy. So if you say you work in this field, they, they are going to give you that weird look, you know, so... Uh, like, yeah, like, uh, what's your actual job? <laughs> do, do you also do something that uh, you can uh, pay your bills on or uh, survive? <laughs> These kind of things. Um, and also, I have to say that I met many people who were involved in this field who only cared about profits. Uh, even uh, back in the day when I did my sound in January school, there were many people involved in the organization who did not really handle the whole thing as it was supposed to be. They, since it's something you normally have to pay a large amounts of money for, properly because it's a, it's a rare thing. It's a, something that gives you something exceptional. So. There, um, there was more concern in the fees <laughs> and uh, in the monetary aspect than, than it was on, on the education purpose. So the problem sometimes is also in culture itself, in the people. I, I'm sorry to say that, but I also met this kind of people before and it doesn't make things easy. Okay. Okay. In which way culture activity can foster economy and uh, human development? Uh, that's actually a very interesting topic because um, fostering the economy, I don't know, this system nowadays has a completely different kind of, uh, of pace and of a set. It's all about producing, um, generating an income, so this is a also a hard question for me to answer. I, I think it can foster the, the human development of the community because culture is uh, actually the um, greatest, greatest richness that we have. We need culture because without culture we are pretty much robots doing the same thing over and over again just to get paid. But we are human so our human experience is made of culture too. It's literally our what makes us as humans, so it can foster the human value of economy, and as such, it deserves to be funded and regarded properly as something important for our life and our community and our experience. Okay. To what uh, to what extent could culture uh, become opportunity for to 
for a youngster and even for a young people? Um, to a large extent, because most youngsters are into culture in uh, one form or another. Many, many youngsters, most of the people I meet actually who are more or less my age are interested in culture. They have the passion because they are young, they are fresh, they, they want to offer something. And maybe not everyone is cut out for a 9 to 5 average job. You know, I, I think that our society should allow each and every one of us to offer what we are meant to offer. There's people who is more comfortable with doing jobs outside the culture field and there are people who want to offer something else which is equally deserving attention and uh, young people have the enthusiasm that it takes to launch into cultural activities uh, and uh, they have the knowledge they have the time because we're young so we can make the most of the resources we have at this age so if uh, the field of culture was more regarded from the authorities, uh, it will have an uh, enormous potential of uh, fighting unemployment among youngsters, which is a dreadful thing. Okay. Now, uh, according to you, and I would like to get yes. this very, very good from you. Why do you think it's so important for the government to invest in culture, young people to invest in culture, according to you? Like, you can give an advice. Why do you think it's so important? I think it's important because uh, mainly uh, referring to Italy, I can say that Italy has a very strong cultural tradition as many other countries, but Italy has a peculiarity of its own in this field, so it would be a shame if something like that went missing at some point. It's important because it promotes values Culture has a message. Culture has been used as a vehicle to transmit messages all over the world. It's a universal language, so it can make us more receptive, more also wiser in a way. And um, I don't know how much the government <laughs> may think that it's an important aspect uh, towards uh, when it comes to a financial standpoint unless it's shallow entertainment but uh, under a human standpoint it's of vital importance so it deserves to be promoted because uh, as i said before without culture we're not we're not even human so we need culture we need to share messages with any kind of people and uh, we do need to listen to what other cultures have to say so it's dehumanizing to take culture out of the human experience this is what i think wow, wow. and first and foremost i'd like to say thank you very much thank you for having time to share with us uh, your experience my pleasure and uh, wow, you, are, you have a lot of experience to tell. And Thanks. We are very, very proud of you. We are very proud of when you see a young kids in the field uh, of culture. And like doing something is our pleasure. So it has been very, very nice to host you in our show. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for having you very much uh, with us to ask you these uh, questions uh, and uh, grow up our knowledge about uh, psychology issues in the field of culture. But I would like to ask you the final question about this interview. And I would like to ask you in which way cultural activities can foster economic and human development. I would start from the human development uh, by saying that when I uh, studied when I studied philosophy, uh, the first um, the first uh, concept we were made to think about was this Einstein. Uh, concept everything is relative and uh, this concept is an absolutism even though so it's a paradox because it's an absolutism it says everything is relative it says everything is so it somehow it's also, um, sort of sort of absolute and um, I think uh, it's um, well what this made me think of is um, it's an oxymoron, 
uh, that warns me against uh, the arrogance of, of human mind and uh, the risk of one-sided uh, perspectives. And I think culture, um, I mention this because I think culture somehow works in the same way. It warns you against uh, the risk of one-sided perspectives because it expands your views, it expands your knowledge, uh, it, it expands your understanding, and um, it, expands to, it expands you to the potentially um, infinite multitude of perspectives. And so warns you against xenophobia, which is a risk that is in everybody, in everyone, even in the most liberated places in the most liberated minds um, culture xenophobia, xenophobia is um, is, a, is a, a risk and the culture um, it's, a sort, it's a sort of antidote it's a sort of uh, medicine because it makes you think about so many different forms of things and so So it fosters human development because um, it makes you learn something different from what you are. And, um, and xenophobia is the opposite. Xenophobia stops you from learning everything that you're not. So um, I think in this way, um, culture is um, fosters human development. Makes you uh, look uh, at, a, um, at each uh, individual things from so many different points of view. Um, if we talk about the economic development, um, I would say that uh, culture can foster economic development because if the government invested money in uh, the maintenance and uh, enhancement of. Uh, um, the Italian huge artistic patrimony, culture patrimony. Um, of course, uh, this would also uh, increase knowledge of tourism, uh, cultural tourism, and increase money. But uh, I'm not so interested in the economic side. Although I can see how we could foster as well the economic development, the announcement of culture. Hey Larry, it was nice to meet you. And thanks uh, for the time that you have to us. And we uh, wish you all the rest. As you are very creative and study a lot in your life, special PhD in psychology and philosophy, if I may say. It's really nice. And I wish you all the best and it was nice meeting you. And also nice having your time for this interview. So hope to meet you again in the life. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you.